previously on East Charmer. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and for today's video I will be showing you how we are going to be racking the Cisco switch that we have configured in the previous video. So the Cisco switch is done with all the configuration. It's now ready to rack so we can deploy it and we can replace the old one that we have in the building. So in this video I will be showing you what you're going to need to rack a switch and also how to patch it in the connected to the router and what kind of cable you're gonna be needing so if you're interested in this kind of video please keep on watching and without further ado let's get started so as far as I remember there is no shutdown command in Cisco I mean there is a shutdown command but that shuts down the interfaces so that doesn't really turn off or power off the networking device so as far as I remember there is no command to turn off a device just like how we do it in the operating system like Windows Linux so I think we just have to uh, turn off the power physically I'm gonna check on that also best practice before you power off your networking device of course you have to save the configuration first always save it just to make sure that you have all of the configuration in your startup config when when the switch powers on and boots again so the command to save your configuration is copy run start or write memory also very important if you are racking it don't forget to label it put some stickers with the switch name and the IP address because it's really helpful during emergency if you're in the data center and you're in front of a switch that doesn't work you don't have to look for switch name in whatever list or spreadsheet or whatever documents you have you just have the switch name and the IP address Okay, so I'm now in the data center where we will be racking the switch and I'm just lucky that there's only one equipment in this rack. So that makes it easier and I'm just checking where we will physically rack it and that's the old switch that we will be replacing. Okay, so this bag came with the Cisco switch. This was also in the box and this includes the screws, the fasteners and things you might need when racking the switch. Okay, so we do have a bunch of screws of different sizes in here that came with the package. We also have brackets in here. Okay, tip before you're mounting or prepping your switch is to take out the power supply because it adds weight to the switch. And then here is the bracket and we are going to screw it to both sides of the switch. This is what's going to support the switch when we are going to mount it and rack it. And of course you're going to need a screwdriver to screw in all four screws to the bracket. Make sure you use all four screws to make it super secure. So here comes the fun part now. We are going to rack the switch and make sure to ask for help and not to do it alone, especially if you are doing this for the first time. You don't want to be hurting yourself and you don't want to break the switch or drop the switch or break other equipments that are right next to the switch so we really have to be careful with this because most of the time when we are racking there are other equipments right next to the switch that are in production and already working and we don't want to cause any downtime or outages when we are touching other equipments also if you are replacing an older switch you should put the new switch at the bottom of the older switch so it will be easy to move all of the connections on the newer switch and the transition will be easier also make sure to assess the rack and make sure that you have the right size for the screw for the rack because we didn't have the correct size and we have to do it again because the screw won't fit in the rack and we have to find the correct size for the screw so it will fit while I'm holding the switch so so just make sure that you have everything you need before you actually screw it in and mount it so it won't be a hassle when you do this 
Okay, so I forgot to film this, but you should put the power supply unit back to the switch so we can plug it into the power strip. So here's best practice. We have two power supply in the switch and we're gonna have two power cables. So we need to plug in both of the power cables on each side of the rack because one goes to the main power and one goes to the generator or the backup. So at least if there's a power outage, our switch can still run on the backup power. Okay, so when we are patching the switch, we are gonna need the SFP or the small form factor pluggable and this is a modular slot where we can plug in fiber optic cable or a copper cable. So there's different kind of SFP we have for the ethernet, multi-mode and single mode we are going to use a single mode and it looks like this with like two slots because we are going to be using fiber optic cable for the switch uplink so this is what it's going to look like now the switch was racked and we have inserted the sfp we used two so we've also plugged in the fiber optic cable to this and now we are going to patch it to the patch panel which i'm going to show you later on but this is what it's going to look like it's inserted in the two network module in front of the switch so this is what our patch panel looks like it patch both of the fiber cable and this is going to be patched into where the router is of course when we're racking a switch we have to connect it to a router and it depends on the company where the router is going to be sometimes it's in the same data center where the switch is in our case it's on a different floor from where the switch is racked so i went to the other floor and patched it in to the patch panel and then i will be patching it to the router itself so that it can connect from the switch to the router so this is what the patch panel looks like and i will be punching in the fiber cable to this and this is our fiber cable this is usually covered with this little white cover that you can see in here so we have to remove that and now we can plug in our fiber cable here just make sure that it clicks on both sides that means it's punched properly so here is where i patch it in the other router here's the patch panel and it will just plug into the router here on top okay so that was the racking part of switch deployment that was more physical work than configuring it because you have to screw it in you have to lift it so i gave some best practice tips that i was also taught to make it easier and of course it will be easier if there's someone who's helping you too so this is just to give you an idea on what it's like i don't do this all the time at work because i don't really don't work on data centers my job is very broad but this is what it usually is like when you are building switches of course you have to rack it and patch it in connect it to the different with the different cables and this is not the end of the deployment we have to move all of the connections from the old switch to the new switch so i'm gonna try to share with you that again if you're interested and see if i can show you some tips also but yeah thank you guys for joining me in this project i hope that you learned something from building switches configuring them until racking them and until deployment so if you have any questions please let me know and hope to see you guys in some more projects to come and i'll be posting more videos soon so please check it out thank you so much for watching